Hello everyone, it's Marshall here from the Southern California Creeksville Society, and I am here with School of the Empire Lesson 1, What is Creeksville? My goal in this video is to create a succinct presentation to introduce people to Creeksville in case they are wondering what the heck this game is all about. Kriegspiel is a military training exercise developed in 1812 for the Prussian Army by nobleman and army officer George Leopold von Rieswitz. The name Kriegspiel means war game. The game is umpired and played double blind requiring three tables, three identical maps, and standardized pieces and tools to regulate movement. The maps are drawn to a specific scale and the pieces are created to occupy the same amount of space on of the same amount of space on the map as they would occupy in the field. Measuring tools help calculate ranges for combat and movement. The umpire oversees the central map upon which all the pieces in play are placed. They're put into their correct position. The other tables, which we will call the red and blue for the sake of convenience, host players for the two sides. Those two tables are not being shown at this time, only the umpire table. The red team clusters around the red table and the blue team around the blue table. On each table, the pieces for each team are accurately placed, so they are synchronized with the umpire's table. However, the pieces of the opposing team are not placed on the table unless the team would be able to see them on the battlefield. So in this case, the blue team, representing the Union Army, would not see these Confederate pieces moving up to their position. They would be removed from the map, and the blue table would only see this. They might not even see this cavalry unit, which is depicted here. The game begins with both teams giving their orders to the umpire, either by written message or by verbal communication. Assistant umpires may be used to handle this communication. Once all the orders for both sides are given, the orders are executed on the umpire map. The umpire then processes the orders for the two sides simultaneously, moving the pieces and using a system to resolve combat between any engaged units. Finally, the umpire provides the results to players who then make their next moves. If at any time a player wishes to communicate with another player at their table, they are required to write their message and then give the note to the umpire. The umpire then calculates how long it would take for the note to arrive where the other player is positioned. Then the note is delivered to the other player at the appropriate time in the game when they would receive it. At that point, the player can then react to the note appropriately. Although players are clustered around the same map and can therefore see what other players on their team are doing, they are not permitted to act on information that they would not normally see. For example, if a player sees a problem developing across the battlefield but would not be able to see it with their own eyes or has not received a message indicating a problem, they cannot react to the situation. Instead, they are required to continue as they would without such knowledge. Eventually, the game is to be played until some objective is accomplished. Usually, that is an academic objective set by the umpire. Once the objective is accomplished, or the lesson taught, the simulation is ended. Most games are not played to the final bitter end of a battle. That's because the game is intended to be an exercise 
it's not so much a battle of wits between the two sides. The game is popular because it presents very well on the table. It just plain looks nice, if the maps and the pieces are well made. It is realistic compared to modern war games, which are not umpired and require innovations such as hexes, counters, and taking turns between players to resolve a conflict. Kriegspiel also simulates realistic conditions, such as the fog of war, delayed communications, and the delayed compliance with orders that results. Outcomes are often unclear, just as they normally are in battle. Although the game is more than two centuries old, it still does a great job of providing a realistic experience. For this reason, many wargamers are interested in the game and seek to play it. However, there are problems with the system they need to know about before starting. First, Kriegspiel was not developed to be played as a game per se, although von Rieswitz was a game player and developed Kriegspiel as one would a game. Instead, it is an exercise. Its fun is diminished by the amount of time it takes to process turns and provide the results. Often the processing of a turn can take many minutes, even an hour or more, depending on the size and complexity of the scenario, the number of combats to be resolved, and the experience of the umpire and the players. This diminishes the fun of the experience to the point many intrepid gamers will give up. This was not a concern in the 19th century when the game was played by cadets as an exercise. The cadets were captive players. They were not allowed to quit. Likewise, when generals played the game to test various scenarios, they were keenly aware of the stakes and wanted the benefit of the knowledge the game provided, no matter how long it took them to play it. Today, gamers expect fast, simple gameplay, something that the original system could not afford. This brings us to the fact Kriegspiel was refined many times during the 19th century. At first, the game was played on maps made of standardized tiles, which featured various kinds of terrain. The tiles were interchangeable. However, these tiles did not provide a realistic space for the game to be played. So later, maps were, pro maps were created based on actual historical locations. By the late 19th century, a version of Kriegspiel called Free Kriegspiel was developed to address the problem of slow gameplay. Dice and tables were removed from the game altogether, allowing the combats to be resolved by the sole discretion of the umpire. The only drawback from this innovation was that the results could be less objective than they might be if dice were used. Kriegspiel is unique in one other way in the fact that there are no rules for players to learn. At least the umpires do not want the players to know the rules. Instead, the focus is on applying the correct tactics, teamwork, and attitude. The umpires handle the rules for the players. It is discouraged for players to seek advantages in the rules. Instead, players should generate advantages just as they would on the battlefield. That would be carefully planning and executing their orders, communicating with others, and making key decisions, such as how to arrive at the battlefield, choosing when to commit, how to commit, where to place reserves, and when to quit. Today, Kriegspiel is played by at least three organized groups in the world not to mention the world's militaries who still wargame, although using widely varied means and technology that is only available to them. The first group is located in the United Kingdom, in the community of Little Gaddison. This group traditionally plays their games in person. Usually they strive to maintain a one-to-one -one player to umpire ratio, meaning each player has their own umpire who deals with them alone and passes along their orders and messages to the lead umpire. The second group is found at the U.S. Army University in Kansas. There, Kriegspiel is played as a training exercise, much like it was two centuries ago. This group also plays in person 
with a high player to umpire ratio. The third group is the Southern California Creekspiel Society. Located mostly in Los Angeles, but with members all around the world, we normally play what we call Southern Creek California style. This is different for the reason uh, that we had to pioneer gameplay on our own, and thus we play differently from other groups and traditional methods. However, the fun and the effect are the same. Playing Cal Southern California style means we play with a minimum of umpires. This was born out of necessity, since when we pioneered the game, few players were knowledgeable enough to umpire or assist. Due to the shortage of help, certain things had to be streamlined. For example, players were permitted to move their own pieces, and the umpire merely corrected anything that was too far out of position. Normally, players are traditionally forbidden to touch the pieces, but we didn't have this luxury. Another innovation involves the use of plastic or plexiglass sheets laid over the map so players can draw their orders in real time, thereby showing the umpire what they intend to do, making it easier for the umpire to uh, adjudicate their orders. Finally, results are not tracked on an individual basis, and reports are vague rather than specific. Players are never told how many casualties are sustained. They're just told that losses have occurred, and they might be notified of a particular result, such as their units are retreating or falling back. In time, in the Southern California Creeksville Society at least, we hope to train more empires to remedy this problem, which is part of the reason for this series of videos that we are now producing. We also would like to see players play on individual maps instead of being clustered around one large map. This will increase the Fog of War experience and make the game more exciting overall. Presently, we, the Southern California Creekspill Association, are hosting virtual events using Tabletop Simulator, a software program designed for all kinds of virtual tabletop games. This is because the software allows great customization. Therefore, we can use our own digital purpose-created maps and our own custom pieces, develop our own scenarios. This also allows us to host players from all around the world. Due to this, the Southern California Creekspill Society may very well be the largest Creekspill community in the world. In addition to online games, we also play face-to-face -face games in Los Angeles, although those are suspended due to COVID-19 restrictions. When allowed, we plan to resume face-to-face -face play, but we also plan to continue virtually play, virtual play to engage players from around the world. Hopefully this video serves as an adequate introduction to what Creekspill is and interests you to learn more. And if you would like to join our community, you are welcome to do so. We presently have a page on Facebook. You can find that page by searching Southern California Creekspill Society on Facebook. Everyone is welcome to join and there are no fees. Thank you very much for watching this video. If this interests you, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like and subscribe as they always say at the end of YouTube videos, don't they? And feel free to share this video with others. We look forward to meeting you in our group and possibly hosting you at a game sometime in the near